a continuing exploration of the cultures and people we share the country with. Colorful encounters with Filipinos who can, if we let them, enrich our own worldviews, our knowledge of ourselves, nourishing, sheltering, healing, adorning, celebrating the manifold ways of being Filipino. This is Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. The second season of Dayao explores the ways in which we Filipinos seek to be whole and complete, how we build our homes, how we heal and adorn our bodies, how we celebrate with dance and music. We begin with how we eat and how we love to eat. We take great care in preparing our food. We share it with our guests with great pride. We celebrate the way our home regions have developed distinct dishes and flavors. We have found unique methods of using spices and flavorings. From the grandest to the most humble, yet enduring. Salt, the most basic element in food preservation and preparation. In our own history, salt has figured greatly in local trade. So much so that foodstuff, beads, cotton yarns, and fibers, natural resources have all been traded for it. The high regard and value that Filipino indigenous people have put on salt is seen in the way the people of Ilocos Norte take great pains to produce it, in the very way their forefathers did. In a setting by the sea that is spare and dramatic, First, pails of seawater are carried and then poured over a filtering mound of sand. The water that is filtered through the sand is allowed to dry to produce the precious salt. Marcelina Vergara, who has been making salt in the traditional manner since she was 15, explains the process. Wala pa nung naisilang na ako, yun ang pinag palaki ng nanay ko po kasi sila na una naggumawa kaya nagaya ko na nagaya po namin dahil yan lang ang hanap buhay namin dito hanggang nagkaasawa po ako yun ang pinaggalingan ng pagpalaki ko sa mga anak ko yung asin po mula sa umaga didiligan mo yung buhangin Tapos pag maarawan na, pag natuyo na, yun naman na lalagay namin sa kuribot, yan ang sasalain namin, lagyan mo ng tubig. Tapos yung tulo, yun ang kunin namin na lulutuin. Tapos pag naging asin na yan, Yan na ang ibebenta namin. Yung maghapon po, dalawang beses lang ang pagluto namin. Yung drum, hatiin mo yan, yan hati, yun ng paglutuan. Punuin mo ng tubig na galing sa dagat, saka yun ng pakukuluin mo hanggang matuyo, maging asin na yun. The process is back-breaking, time-consuming and can only be done during the dry season. Hindi kami na magagawa kung umulan na. Pagtagaraw lang po. The same methods that Marcelina used today were used by her forefathers in their time. And salt, much like hers, was traded up from the Ilocos coastlands into the Cordilleras, where it was used to preserve meat. To understand how valuable salt was to the people of the Cordilleras, one must understand the unforgiving and difficult terrain. Hey, 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 hey. 
Meat, from boar, from carabao and deer, whether wild or domesticated, was so hard to come by that its preservation was crucial to survival. Thus, the Kalinga developed their own cured meat called etag. Elsie Undok of Lubwagan demonstrates the simple process. Lalagyan po ng asin yung karne. Punuhin ng asin para hindi ano ng insekto. At saka pagkatapos malagyan ng asin. Tutusukin ng kawayan. Pagkatapos po ibibilag ng init. At saka pagkatapos ng three days, babalutin ng newspaper. After three days, open naman at saka ibibilad ulit ng init. Pagkatapos three days, babalutin ulit ng newspaper. And then, maging itag na. Simple and uncomplicated methods of food preparation are common among the Cordillera people. In Ifugao, varieties of glutinous rice like in galiton and in alinao are cooked together and served in a flat, covered basket. This is the filling, invigorating snack called dikit. Simple and yet nutritious staples from the Kalinga and the Ifugao, sustaining the body, marking a distinct identity. In the Ilocos region, the need to preserve vegetables has given the rest of the country a signature dish we all enjoy. Pinakbet. Pinakbet meaning pinakebet. Pinakebet in Ilocano and in Tagalog is pinaliit. The reason why they cook it in only bagoong and tomatoes is to preserve the vegetables. When we cook pinakbet, we try to like make them very salty so that you can eat it the whole day. You cook one batch in the morning, then it's there on the table, just cover it, and the whole day, it's a staple. The simmering stew of fresh vegetables combines many flavors and textures as well, and none more relished than the topping of bagnet. This time, lagay na natin yung ating favorite na bagnet. So this is bagnet. Famous in Ilocos, it's pork with layers of fat and meat. You can put fish if you want, but in Ilocos, this is how we do it. So cover it, allow the bagnet to soften because it's best eaten soft with the pinakbet. And this is pinakbet of Ilocos, Mangan Tayon. For the Islamic peoples of the Philippines, food preparation begins with adherence to the prescribed way of living. The term halal does not only pertain to the way food is prepared, but to the correct and proper observance of Islam's precepts in one's life. Islam's traditional emphasis on cleanliness, fairness, charity, and fidelity to Allah's teachings determines what is halal and what is not. Hindi lang sa tinatawag natin itong mga pagkain na halal. Lahat ng gagawin mo, lahat ng pagsalita mo, dapat halal yan. Kasi dalawang klase, halal at saka haram. Yung haram na yun, yung hindi namin pwede kanain. Bawal sa yamin. Yung haram, yung haram, yung pagkain na baboy, yung pagkain na aso, Yun ang haram sa amin. 
Only when the animal or fowl is raised and fed in a halal prescribed manner, and only when the correct prayer is offered upon its slaughter, can the meat be described as truly halal. Yung mga ninuno namin, ay once nagluluto sila, is lahat yan halal. Hindi yan binabago yung halal. Dati na yan, yung kami na mga Muslim, ay dapat kinakain namin yung mga halal. Tapos yung mga magulang namin, tinuturoan kami, yung bawal na hindi pwede kani, kakainin, kay ayon yun sa Quran na nakalagay. Yung Quran na yan is kompleto, nandyan lahat yan, yung haram at saka halal, nandyan lahat nakalagay. Kaya yung kami na mga Muslim, lahat na kinakain namin ay puro halal. If Ilocano Cuisine speaks about the resilience and thrift of the Ilocano and adobo for the inventiveness of the Filipino, then what does Kapampangan Cuisine say about the nature of its creators? Two stalwarts of Kapampangan Cuisine, one a staunch traditionalist, the other an innovator, tell us about their own takes on what is undoubtedly one of the more interesting regional cuisines. You can eat it raw, it's hardly any cooking. So basically what we cook here is the shrimp, but it's the gisa, the uh, sauteed garlic and onion that gives it. Gourmand, chef, painter, and proud Kapampangan, Cloud Tayag, sees the cuisine of his province as a traditional result of its geography, as well as the practical need for food preservation. Pampanga is right at the heart of Central Plain of Luzon. So we're basically, literally a plain, no? the plains of, uh, and it's uh, irrigated by the Pampanga River. So in the cycle of the wet and dry season, the first sign of rain, what do you, and just go outside the fields, what do you have? It's like frogs, a camaro in the rice fields, these are the rice crickets. Hito, the lag, and then the ulang in the Pampangari. Ulang would be the crayfish or the freshwater prawns. So what I'm saying is like our, our tradition of uh, staple, you can say fishes, would be freshwater fishes. A quintessential Pampango dish would be the, the buro, when we say buro here, we refer to the burong hipon or burong isda, meaning it's the fermented rice with something, fish. So the thing is like, um, preserve them with salt. So it is this taste, the sour, salty of the buro that a kapampangan will hunger for everywhere he would find himself in the world. E even in the old days, people knew um, by preserving it with salt or sugar, which Pampanga is a producer of uh, sugar cane, we have an abundance of this. Basically, that defined our panlasa. So what you do is cook the vegetables separately. For Cloud, the richness of Kapampangan cuisine can also be traced to the Kapampangan's natural flair. Okay, it should be done. Simple, yet complete to recado. All the ingredients are there. We do not skimp on, on the ingredients, yung mora. Kapampangan chef and cultural worker Lilian Borromeo shares her own memories of how she first learned to cook. In a grand Kapampangan manner that she cherishes but does not emulate. Tumira ako sa grandmother ko na, na mahilig sa mga magaganda, mahilig sa masasarap. Ngayon, gusto niya matuto ako sa gaya nung kung ano yung ginagawa niya. Pero siya, nagluluto sila, hindi siya naghahawak ng kutsilyo, hindi siya naghahawak ng sandok. Hawak niya po may pay. Tapos sinasabi lang niya sa maid niya, oh, gawin mo yan, gisa mo yan. Hmm, iba yung amoy, hindi maganda. Hmm, gili, iwahin mo ito, mali ang pagkahiwa. Parang gano'n, parang teacher. So nandun din ako, naka, naka, nandyan din ako nakaupo, maliit lang ako. So mga three or four years old, instead of playing doll, Ang laro ko, isang kutsara at isang dahon, pukpukpukpuk ganyan sa kusina, tinitingnan ko kung ang instruction binibigay ng grandmother ko. Hanggang lumaki ako, nakikita ko yon, 
，那朵朵。A Ching Lilian's kitchen boasts of many dishes, from the grand to the humble. But a staple and perennial favorite is a San Nicolas cookie, a pastry imprinted with the image of Saint Nicholas. The pastry is particularly in demand during the September feast of the saint. Ang mga ingredients natin para sa ating San Nicolas ay meron tayong butter, meron tayong sugar, meron tayong oil, milk, egg yolks, flour, cornstarch, at saka meron tayong baking powder. at yung ating lemon rind. Very simple lang ito. Pagalu-haluin lang lahat at imasa. Tutuyuin natin ang ating dough. Sa pagluluto natin, kinagamit natin lahat ng senses natin. Yung mata, yung ilong, yung pag-amoy mo sa linuluto mo, yung pag-taste, yung pag-dinig sa mga galaw ng ginaluto mo, at by touch. Ito sa touch. personal are these cookies to Aching Lilian? And how does her own culture and memory shape her products? Well, for starters, the molds on which the cookie dough is shaped are heirlooms of Lilian's family. Itong molding ito sa grandmother ko, sa Hison Lorenzo. Yung isa naman, yun ang first wife ng grandfather ko. Ngayon, yung isa namang molde, nandun doon sa lalagyan natin, sa second wife naman. Nung nilabas ko yung dalawang yun, siguro coincidence lang, yung dalawang wives niya. <laughs> Para yung swerte. Kaya yun ang ginagamit ko. At Ching Lilian's recipes are tempered by her understanding and memory of tradition. all reflected in her own recreation of a traditional Kapampangan kitchen. Ang kusina ng ating mga ninuno ay napakalaki, na wala pa silang kuryente, nothing to entertain them inside the kitchen. So the poor cooks, if not praying, they compose songs and poems. At meron din silang activity sa kanilang kusina. Meron siyang love because it's a labor of love. Meron siyang sacrifice and meron siyang devotion. Ito na ang panesilyo de San Nicolas. Oh, takman niye. Food presentation is another field in which regional cultures and values are manifested. In Bulacan, desserts and preserves are savored only after the eye has feasted on the tempting presentation. Fruits and vegetables are carved and layered to create whole vistas, virtual worlds inside bottles. 
and desserts like pastillas are offered to visitors wrapped in delicately cut and patterned wrappers. Ang borlas ni pastillas po ay influence sa atin ng mga Mexicano. Ang tawag nila ay papel picado. At saka po yung sa China, yung Jiangxi. Later po, naituro dito sa Pilipinas. From the simplest of foods and the most basic of preservation techniques, to the flights of fanciful presentation, Filipino traditional food is a feast that reveals and constantly engages us. Filipino food is one of the most important aspects of Filipino culture. We have seven major cultural regions, and every region has its own way of looking at food. Ilocanos are very well known for thrift, and wise use of resources. So even their food maximizes the bounties of nature. When we go to Pampanga, of course, Pampanga is in the central plains of Luzon, and there's really much of uh, agricultural products in this place. The Pampangas, therefore, can really indulge in more luxuries when it comes to food. And definitely, when it comes to food, the Pampangas are among the most creative in this country. Almost nothing of nature that they can turn into food. If you go to Mindanao and find the Muslims, because of the religion, everything has to be in accordance with the precepts of Islam. So that uh, if, if you really go to uh, Mindanao, you'll find that the food has to be halal. Pagana Maranao, which is very interesting, it's a kind of big or grand party where you find yellow rice. It's very much a Marano product. If you go to many other parts of the Philippines, you'll find the same expression of versatility and creativity. Because in the islands, well, before refrigerators came into being in this country, people had to really find many different ways of uh, preserving food. And salt being abundant in this country, we're surrounded by seawater, so we were able to use salt, we were able to use vinegar, and many other methods for preserving food. So this just shows you the adaptability and the versatility and the creativity of Filipinos when it comes to using food. The food is a reflection of the temperament or character of the different peoples in the Philippines. Food is most easily the most expressive cultural expressions, and in an archipelago as vast as ours, each dish, each tradition, tells a story of how a people have related to the land, have harvested its produce, have developed a culture of tastes and flavors, each and every one of them, a delicious expression of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride.